Добър вечер на всички, чуваме ли се? Много ме кефи как всички замълчават при някой като каже нещо с микрофона. И сега ще почнем целта на нещо събити, само че да е парти. Супер стресирани сме целият ден, съм правили презентации, която се предсака, така че само си говориме. Но няма никакво значение, тук сме събрали да пинеме, си полафиме. Ще има много готини хора, които ще разкажат разни неща за крипто. И всяка минута ще си поговориме за такива неща. Аз съм Мил Василев, това е Влади и почваме, може би и сега. Да. Така че първо, евалото, че толкова много хора са дошли, надявам се не е само заради цена на криптоактивите, но дори да и тя причината няма лошо, евалото, че сте дошли, че се интересуват от такива неща. Така че може да си ръкопласкате сами на себе си, че сте тук. Така ли? Така по-добре ли си чува? Да. А, да, нещо събитие е нашата 20-та сбирка на София Крипто Митапа, който почна преди една година и 9 месеца горе Кога е било? Януари 2016-та, когато бяхме 7 човека. Между другото, хубавото е, че освен мен и Вари, аз виждам някои човека от тия 7, които бяха тук. Значи, лоялти, нали? Все още са тук. Но вече са, както виждате, много повече. През последните 16 месеца така много повече говориме за криптокаранси, правят се много повече сбирки, а, опитваме се да представяме нови ICO-та в България. За радост вече има много нови проекти, които са успешни на ниво привличане на капитал. Пожелаваме пожелавам им да са успешни на ниво интегриране на протоколи. Нали? Това също е доста важно нещо. А, искам да кажем с две думи горе-долу каква е историята на, на то криптомитап, на къде искаме да отиде и каква е следващата визия. А, искаш ли да разкажеш някакви неща ти? Ами да, това което... Също тя трябва да се на английски, така че може би ще, ще случи на... Смисъл, ще, ще ме премина на английски, okay. за да може да разбират може би всички. Има ли... Колко... Uh, are there any foreign, foreign people here? People who don't understand Bulgarian? Please raise your hand. Who doesn't speak Bulgarian? Yes. One person, two people. <laughs> Okay, for Welcome, we'll go in English just me. Yes, <laughs> yes. So yeah, uh, as as you said at the beginning, there were very few people uh, and uh, I was doing presentations to seven, ten people at the beginning and now we have so many people. I, this is very, very, um, this is very inspiring for me and um, what it means is that there are more and more people interested in the sphere and in order to accommodate all of that interest what we are planning to do is to uh, make an, a step in the direction of maybe not institutionalizing the meetup but creating a place where uh, all the different players or all the different people who, who are uh, interested in different things in the sphere can go to and get the relevant information. And um, with this idea, we actually went to Launch Hub, uh, who are one of our sponsors now, and they provided us with some funding that we are going to use in order to create a website of the Bulgarian community, which is going to be in English though, uh, so that more people can join it. And this website uh, is actually going to be cr um, cryptocrowd.org, is going to be called the website. And there everyone will be able to go and see news. And uh, we have noticed that there are a lot of companies here in Bulgaria who are looking for people, for developers, for uh, community managers of all different kinds of talent in order, for, uh, in order for their products to be realized. And we would like to provide them with the opportunity to um, announce these positions on that website. On the other hand, there are also people who are looking um, for job in the blockchain se sector. There are um, different kinds of talents, let's say developer talents and marketing talents. Uh, there are a lot of, we know that there are a lot of um, investors or financial financial experts, we also need the legal experts, so this website will be the place where you can go register and announce your intentions or formal intentions uh, of joining the blockchain sphere uh, professionally, so to say. And um, we were, actually the website is currently in, in, uh, in, in the phase of development, soon it's going to be ready. So and Yes, and what is very interesting is, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about 21 Inc. Are there any fans of 21 Inc. here, apart from Ivo? Okay, one fan. <laughs> so, idea. 21 Inc., who knows about that? 
Okay, a few more people. But but uh, but the idea there, uh, just uh, the idea there is that in order to contact somebody, you need to pay a little amount of cryptocurrency in order to get your message to them. And if they decide to reply, um, they can get the the cryptocurrency. If they, if they decide to skip on your, uh, I mean, your message, they don't get the cryptocurrency. And we would like to put this, this idea into this new website. Uh, if you, if you want to, um, if you want to contact an, an expert or a group of experts, let's say you want to contact all developers on the website or all marketing people on the website, what you need to do is. Um, pay a certain small amount of cryptocurrency and then you'll be able to send your message to all of them. And uh, this idea, I think, uh, it will make people more familiar with cryptocurrency. We know a lot of people have cryptocurrency, but I think uh, a lot of people who are entering the sphere now don't have cryptocurrency. And we would like to uh, uh, implement that idea of using cryptocurrencies to pay for something, for services, for, for just uh, opinions into that website. And maybe Nivo can say more. I just wanted to say that basically this whole idea with cryptocurrencies will open up new ways of how things should be done, right? And uh, nowadays we are like on top of many social medias, on top of a lot of internet stuff, but we are not paying to each other. We are not providing value to each other. And cryptocurrency could be one of those things, like every single interaction could be put small value on, on top of it, which is very important. Like something like that hasn't been happening before. We are actually staying in stupid Facebook. I like it actually to some extent to giving our time to be influenced by ads. And maybe new models will be with exchange, with what money should be for. And 21 was one of those companies to establish that idea. We want just to everybody from the crypto community to be able to communicate with each other and experiment with crypto. And the whole big idea that we want to establish here is that cryptocurrency is obviously something important for the world. Some of these ICOs will die, but some will become the next big important organizations, companies, if companies as a term will exist. And, um, and these things will be super important for the world. And if Bulgaria has developers, has interest, has uh, people who already experiment with crypto, we should somehow formalize it, create a community, create a way for this information between us to flow rapidly, to flow efficiently, so we exchange ideas, experiment, try different things, be reachable, be reachable if you want a job, be reachable if you're looking for somebody to work for you. Um, all these things to, to really create the new innovations from here. And Bulgaria has the chance, why not? Like Estonia uh, is becoming now uh, big in cryptocurrency and all other things like e-government and so on, and they're a small country. Slovenia has a couple of very successful IPOs, uh, ICO, sorry. Actually, LaunchCup uh, financed I economy, which was an ICO in 2016, which now is valued based on their market cap at over 150 million. So, they becoming important, so on and so forth. And also there are many different players in this community which are working on different directions. And now we'll uh, uh, present many of them, but there are many more. There are people who work on investment side, people working on education for cryptocurrency, people working on development, new ICOs, legal side, investments, and so on and so forth. So we have like all the ingredients, and when we have all the ingredients, if we formalize it and we create these established communication layers between them, we can create something magical. And that's the point of it, to create magic. You know, I like magic, so let's do more magic. And. Uh, one more thing, actually, with this funding, it's not a funding, but if we tell you the sum, it's going to be, so we'll keep it private for now. But the point is that we want to start doing stuff so all these organizations participate. And one of the things we're doing, we're actually hiring somebody now. We're introducing today the first, basically, official role of the Bulgarian Crypto Meetup. We're looking for somebody to take care of the community, to do these events, to understand what is happening in crypto, provide this information, and we're actually paying with Ethereum or Bitcoin or some other crazy tokens that you find, but like, will you all be responsible for the price? So we pay you, and if it uh, disappears the next day, it's your fault. So you will be able to actually participate in that. So if you're an individual, you can go on the website. There is jobs, find out, cryptocrowd.org. Um, we also, of course, announced it in the, in the Facebook group. But the whole idea is that ever since we have been um, present, present in the community here in Bulgaria, what we have done uh, is to bring people together. And uh, 
when we are bringing people together, these people start may, may start doing some interesting things together, creating some something in the blockchain sphere. And we believe this new website that we are creating. I mean, I don't know how to do it. So, how do you do it? 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 So, yes, the idea is that this new website is actually a new tool which is, which is going to help us to bring people together more efficiently. And as soon as it's ready, it is ready, we will, uh, of course, announce it. But as, as Ivo said, if you're interested in joining the team and helping us bringing all the information in Bulgaria and around the world uh, related to blockchain and um, more or less managing the website, which, are, which, is, going to, uh, which is going to be created, let us know uh, and maybe apply for the position. And finally, if you want something uh, before we start the presentations. No, no. Okay, um, so after this big announcement, let's call it a big announcement, um, we have uh, in store for you a number of uh, leaders or industry leaders from the sphere which are going to talk to you about the future uh, of their specific sphere. And we're going to start with investments uh, and we have uh, Bogves Belev here from actually who is managing blockchain.bg and he will be talking about the future of finance and investments uh, in the blockchain. The point of today, <laughs> come. Just a just couple of agreements we have between us. The point of today is to be casual, to speak about what's going on in the community, to chat a lot. And uh, yeah, that's, I want that team to continue. So you can start just saying what you do and yeah, what, what is your goal? Thank you very much. Um, we're living in exciting times. This month we had Paris Hilton taking part of ICOs. A few days ago we had Jamie Foxx. So uh, it's definitely peak hype right now. Uh, yeah, I'm very glad that the blockchain community locally here is growing so fast. We have so many people coming over. Um, I personally believe it's going to be very healthy for Bitcoin and for, for blockchain, for cryptocurrency to have a little bit of a calm down in the next few months so that it could grow stronger from then on. I still don't believe we're in an extreme bubble. There is a lot more to go. Um, but still, a relatively good size correction uh, is needed, definitely. Mm, I recently discovered a very interesting um, metric for um, measuring whether we are in a cryptocurrency bubble or not. Uh, there is this guy, Willie Wu, on Twitter who posted uh, his metric um, and it consists of uh, measuring the ratio between the market cap of Bitcoin divided by the daily worth of transactions measured in US dollars. And um, by doing this backwards, he was able to actually get the biggest two bubbles from 2011 and the late 2013, where the ratio skyrocketed much higher than, than it actually is now. Um, it's just one metric. I really liked it. It clicked with me when I saw it first time. So I just wanted to share that. Um, so uh, nobody knows what's going to happen in, in the next uh, months. Uh, it's definitely going to be interesting, and whatever happens, not, that's not going to be the end, even if uh, everything falls down quickly. Uh, so, if you're here to stay, not just for this hype right now, but for a few years from now, you'll be you'll truly benefit from the development of all this um, this whole technology. What we do, um, we're blockchain.bg. Uh, we just uh, we're in the process of starting. We just started. It's a little bit of a, a raw beta version, uh, the first cryptocurrency fund in Bulgaria where we can manage uh, private <laughs> investors' uh, portfolios of cryptocurrencies. Mm, we are also establishing the first over-the-counter dealer for bigger deals where we can, um, we can target uh, funds, banks, or bigger investors um, where they can uh, buy or sell bitcoins and ma other major cryptocurrencies for very low premium. Um, near market rates, we can accommodate really uh, relatively big amounts which are suitable for even for funds or banks. Um, basically, that's it. Thank you very much. It's a short talk. 
uh, enjoy the other talks and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Uh, here, here the goal is to show you what sort of individuals we have in that community or companies, or organizations, and they are from many different angles. Um, the next one I want to present is uh, Svetlo Nakov. Where is he? Actually, uh, Svetlo is one of the co-founders of, uh, of Software in University, which is a private university. It doesn't need to be licensed because licensing university is a, I mean, too much of a hassle. But the, the point is, oh wow, <laughs> I didn't know you are. Do you want some <laughs> chair or something? Anyways, but uh, he and his co-founder. Christo, they, they were one of the first to recognize that blockchain is a big deal and they're actually providing courses for blockchain development, which is huge. And I want him, wanted him to say about this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And sorry for being a little bit kutz. Uh, this is due to some playing football. I don't know these words in English. So we are proud to introduce that we are starting a serious blockchain development academy, uh, which is part of the Soft Uni. <laughs> and it, it will take six months. The first course will be for everyone, uh, for, from people who want to dig some coins, uh, people who want to just learn what is this about, what is blockchain, how it works, what about uh, the, the cryptocurrencies, the um, things like that. The second course will be introduction to programming, but related to blockchain. And the third course will be a Solidity pr uh, development course, where people will work on their projects. It will be project-based training. People will write code, will uh, invite some idea, either their own idea or something from a bookshelf, <laughs> and they will write it. Later, they will write it again without security problems, because traditional de developers, when they switch to Solidity, uh, and if they code the same way, uh, their money will be stolen. <laughs> so you, you should be careful. So the, the big thing is that we are launching uh, this, maybe the first in Bulgaria uh, of this range, blockchain for developers. Uh, are there some developers in the loop here? People who caught? And people, are there somebody who wants to learn how to code? Hey, people, we, are, we have uh, free course in, in 38 towns in Bulgaria. In towns like uh, Botevgrad, Dupnica, Petrich, and Silistra in Svistov. So everywhere you can join to pass a free course in programming basics. Later, you can uh, take the Blockchain Academy to learn the basics, the basics from the economics side. Uh, we'll, we'll have also a special course about digging, but we have some problems to get enough, uh, <laughs> enough hardware. You know, it's not very easy to get some. And, and that's all. It, it would be nice to, to show you how to join, but if you remember Softuni blockchain, it will be easy to find it in Google. This is in Sofia. Okay, you can join on site, but we have only 40 uh, places left. We, ha we sold 160 already, and the course starts t tomorrow. <laughs> 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 but you, you still could join if you are fast on your phone. Uh, but the, the other courses, which are basics of programming, we have uh, in most months 2,000 people who join. And this month we will have 5,000 because we have all the country, 38. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are really big. It's not a joke. Um, and we are partners with Eternity. They are sponsoring the, the course. And we, are <laughs> and we are devoted to continue to develop this education because I believe Bulgaria could become a leader in Europe in the Blockchain development, yeah. Thank you. Questions later, okay? Or if you, if I mean, uh, you can, if you have questions, you can shoot now. Since he's here and he's very, 
e mobile, yeah. <laughs> okay. If you have questions later, go to softuni.bg uh, and you'll find the information yeah. there. It, 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 works, it, it works online and on site. So, uh, on site means that you enter in the web. We have. Oh, what's the website name? Ah, Softuni. Uh, it, it will be in Bulgarian. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. But, but, but there are a, a lot of uh, blockchain courses around the world in English. This is the, the Bulgarian one. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a virtual classroom with live streaming, real time with questions, uh, the normal things. Okay, guys, a round of applause for Softuni. <laughs> Okay, so now we have uh, Vanina Ivanova from ADEX, uh, who recently did an ICO and are trying to change how advertising is being done, or actually trying to implement advertising on a blockchain. So, Ivan, what's happening? Thank you. Hi, my name is Vanina, and I will make you rich. <laughs> now that I have your attention, full disclaimer, I probably won't make you rich. But this is a perfect example of what an advertiser has to do in order to break through the noise and get their message communicated to their audience. And that's a big issue. You need to have a really strong, really powerful message. And that, as if that's not hard enough, you need to battle um, all of the advertising platforms and all of the middlemen uh, in order to get your message across. And that's hard and makes things even harder for an advertiser to monetize their influence. This is why we got into uh, into blockchain and decided to bring blockchain into advertising. Because one of the biggest issues of advertising is ad fraud. A lot of money disappear into bottomless pits and nobody knows why is this money paid, who has seen their ad, yada, yada, yada. This is why we decided to change things and create addicts. We're doing a blockchain-based advertising network where all the reporting is stored on the blockchain and advertisers and publishers can see what exactly has happened to their ad on the blockchain. Now, when I was coming here today, Vlad asked me to uh, say a few words about the future of the blockchain advertising industry and why can we talk about the blockchain advertising as a whole industry? Well, because a few months ago when we were doing our ICO, when uh, when we were doing our token sale, um, there was just ADEX. Right now, there's at least six different advertising platforms that are based on blockchain, and they all work uh, in a different in a different way. But we're all working towards the same goal. So what we're trying to do is initially roll out prototypes. Right now, there's no advertising uh, platform that is working that is based on blockchain. Uh, we are expecting to release our prototype in October, if all is well. I hope. So uh, we're waiting for the first platforms. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. These are uncharted waters. We don't know what we're doing. We're going to learn by doing it. And we're going to learn from each other. So the competition in this industry is going to be really helpful and really healthy. A few things that I see as trends in the blockchain advertising sphere are, um, first of all, getting influencers on board, educating marketing and advertising influencers about the blockchain, about cryptocurrencies, and about the way they can monetize their influence and their social power and status in crypto. That is one big trend that I, I think think we'll see in this in this area uh, and that will happen pretty soon. Now the next big step and this is really exciting is eliminating a lot of middlemen and I'm sure that anyone who has ever paid for an online ad would be super hyped to know that there will be less and less middlemen in the advertising marketplace. And the third and most important trend that I see and I hope I will see is introducing real-time bidding on the blockchain. Now, real-time bidding, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the advertising industry, is uh, an ex the exchange of money for advertising 
space that happens in a fraction of a second. This is currently not possible on the blockchain because the blockchain is just slow. It's, it doesn't. It was not built to accommodate such technology. And this is something that the advertising industry will naturally push for in its development on the blockchain. So in a way, we're not only benefit, benefiting from the blockchain, but we're also pushing its development. And I think this is really, really exciting. So to be honest, I can't wait to see what the uh, crypto community and the crypto sphere holds for us in the upcoming 12 months. But uh, we'll be here to see it. Thank you. Thank you, Vanina. Um, question. question, one question for Vanina. Okay. Hi. Okay, this is the question that we get a lot. The basic attention token uh, was created, w is, is a different advertising, blockchain advertising platform developed by a very strong team. I am pretty sure that these people know what, what they're doing. Their white paper is very strong. And the main difference between us and between BAT, the basic attention token, is that BAT will be browser specific. Right now, it's built to work with the Brave browser, which is created by the same team and it will be applicable to other browsers as well but coders will have to uh, actually tweak the code of the browser in order to implement uh, BAT. Addicts on the other hand will be working on any device, any browser, any operating system. You're welcome. Any other questions? Do we have any publishers? That's a fanta fanta fantastic question. Uh, we already have a few partnerships. Uh, for example, one of the partnerships that we have is with the uh, Russian-based platform for video uh, content, AdHive. Uh, so AdHive will be an advertiser, um, uh, will be a publisher, sorry. So they'll be showing uh, their ads to their audience. Uh, the other thing that is uh, actually quite important to mention is that the team of addicts actually comes from a different project called Streamio, and that's a video uh, uh, video aggregation platform and Streamio will be a publisher on Addix as well. This means that we will start very strong with a user base of 4 million active users on Streamio. So if, an ad if a new advertiser comes to us, then we will already have an audience of 4 million people that they can reach uh, through Streamio. They'll have the audience of AdHive and of any other publishers that we will acquire through business development. As soon as, the, as, as soon as the platform is live, you as a publisher can go ahead, register a profile for free, and start accepting bids from advertisers. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Adex is definitely a very interesting project. Uh, but I'm now going to give the stage to Nikoa from Eternity. Nikoa, please join us here. <laughs> Uh, and he'll be talking about what is what Eternity is doing. Actually, I'm also part of Eternity, and uh, we are together trying to push the community forward. Um, as mentioned before, we are sponsors of the educational course in Soft Tuni, and we will be in the future doing a lot more things for the local community. But Nico can tell you more. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, that's good. So, Vladi, first of all, thank you for pretty much taking half of what I was going to say beforehand. Appreciate it. But in summary, again, I'm very happy to see that uh, Mr. Nankov is here from Software University, with whom we actually partnered up for to subsidize the first blockchain course, which will be offered in Bulgaria. And after we have, I think in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinion, have been quite successful in our idea to develop a new platform what is the most important thing that we're missing right now obviously it is to generate a larger community to have more people implemented and to have as many people as possible directly involved in eternity 
And this is why we are right now actually taking this opportunity, which I didn't know anything about until recently, that I will be announcing that we will open something like a closed loop incubator here in Sofia. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit more. <laughs> Now, that in the first step sounds very, very simple. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but in the first step, that sounds very simple, but it's a little bit more complex than that. So what we're planning to do is actually have a foundation and a for-profit company established here in Bulgaria, which is going to subsidize projects, first of all, obviously, to build projects or applications on top of eternity, but also work towards open source projects. And in this idea, a closed loop ecosystem for me is not only for to provide an actual incubator where you will go in, uh, you'll get some kind of teaching, you'll have a little bit of time, you'll have an office and you'll go out and maybe you succeed, maybe you don't. No, it's way more than that. We have tried to combine different service providers that we have worked with in the few in the past and that we have heard of from other people that have successfully been able to generate projects and generate enough contributions in order to succeed in fundraising to be able to continue on the journey of their actual vision to create something new so those service providers will allow any person that comes into this incubator to have the opportunity it doesn't matter really where you come in so if you are some a technical person, if you're a non-technical person, if you're a marketing person, if you're a growth hacker, if you're a content person, whatever you are, there's going to be a place, if you're interested, where you'll be able to directly connect with this whole ecosystem. So I'm very, very proud to announce that and I'm pretty much looking forward to see what anybody that has an idea can come up with. And please feel free to come and see me, or Vladi actually, and share your ideas and let's see what happens. Thank you. And Nico is staying here. You can chat with other people later, right? He's here. Yes, I am here until Monday, so but also here until tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> not until Monday, but yeah. Um, the next company we invited, and actually we are very proud that uh, Bulgaria is also not only hosting experimenters, which are basically people coming up with these crazy ideas, building blockchains, building these innovative solutions in whatever crazy ways they can imagine. And here the point is imagination. You can imagine everything. But then when you build these protocols, you need to test them somewhere. And usually the testing environment should be real companies who buy it or somehow integrate with other infrastructures and so on and so forth. And um, in many cases, these companies might be the huge companies of the world, might be in fields like payments, supply chains, identity, database, I don't know, too many things that you can basically integrate blockchains. But to do these efficient implementations, you need to work with, with established players. And we invited one of these established players, and we're very proud that they have the biggest R&D office here in Bulgaria, which is Paysafe, actually one of the big payment companies in the world. And they'll tell you how they experiment with blockchain, how they're looking for blockchain use case, and so on and so forth. So I'll invite Pavel, and he'll tell you more. Please give a round of applause. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm Pavel uh, from the Paysafe product group. And I'll, uh, well, the short story is that we're looking into blockchain and exploring things. Um, the long story, I'll just take you through our thinking and our process and try to give you a bit of an idea um, and hopefully you'll uh, get out of this with more questions than answers because I at least according to me questions are more important than answers um, okay before we start I want to make a, a short experiment and I need a volunteer an accomplice can somebody come on stage please yes <laughs> okay um, okay because you are <laughs> in, fa in return of your favor this is five lever, and I'm giving Jeanette five lever. And what did we just achieve? Okay, this was a <laughs> corruption. <laughs> nice one. This was a transaction that was decentralized, real time, peer to peer, and zero transaction fee. Okay, <laughs> can your can your cryptocurrency do that? No. Okay, this was just I'm playing devil's advocate here, but uh, I just. Uh, you know, to get your attention on to, you know, we often live in our 
um, digital cozy world and if we forget that some solution already exists to problems that we're trying to solve. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, let's get going. Um, what is money? Money uh, could be a database. <coughs> Money is a shared illusion. So I just gave Jeanette five lever, and which practically that's a piece of paper that says five lever. And she accepted it, and that between us, she knew that these are five lever. And then she could go to the store and buy something with the five lever because she knows that we all share an illusion that this piece of paper has some worth and some value in it. Um, just a reminder that long gone are the times where money was bound to gold. So that was 50 years ago or more. Uh, now this is no longer the case. And to make things even stranger, you know, if you go to the bank, the bank will not give you a piece of gold for your five lever. And, you know, roughly the only thing that they can do is exchange it maybe in a, into a different currency. So how do you think the rate is determined for the different currencies? There's, uh, there's a thing called LIBOR, LIBOR, I don't know even how it's exactly pronounced, which, um, which is even further into the strange world of imagination because it's determined by each bank, there's a person in there sitting and every day determining the LIBOR rate, which is actively the effective rate that banks use to interchange currencies between each other. And they collect from every bank, they just collect the rate and then they average it and that's the, the rate you get when you exchange currencies. So, and how these people do that? They just look inside the trading area and see, are people in a good mood? Are they trading well? Yes, then the rates are low. If uh, on the opposite, the things go wrong, then, well, the rates are high. So, quite strange. Let's talk a little bit about value. So, um, this is the dictionary definition of value and I kind of agree with that definition. So it's something you of use, so uh, something of worth, something of usefulness. Um, and because I really like etymology, which is the source of words, so how words actually came to, to play. Um, it comes from Latin to be strong and solid, and I particularly like the Bulgarian word of it, which is stoinost. So this is something that stays, something that will stick around. So this is value. And how is value created? Well, value is created by us. It's often said that value is created by entrepreneurs that create things. But, you know, a shepherd somewhere in a, in a valley building a shelter could be classified as, a, as an entrepreneur because he's creating a value, something that stays with us. So that's, that's what we all of us, that's what we do. We create things. Let's talk about wealth. Um, this is the dictionary definition of wealth. Uh, between economists, wealth is <coughs> loosely defined. So they're, they're arguing about how wealth is defined. Um, if you use this definition, try to explain this sentence. So this is an actual sentence from the crisis in 2008. And 11 trillion dollars were wiped out by the financial crisis. So what does this mean? They, they burned, somebody took them, or they moved, or somebody just destroyed the houses? No. Wealth is also an illusion, but um, wealth is an illusion taking into account how people feel about the future. Imagine you are in Germany and it's the end of World War II. Would your wealth be worth something? Probably not. You'll be quite pessimistic about it. And wealth is not going to help you in any way. Again, etymology. This is the word wealth. It comes from well in Old English, and in Bulgarian, we also have a very nice word about it, uh, for it, it's Blagostostoyanie, which means kind of, you're doing okay, you know, you have, you're fine. And how is wealth created? Now, actually this one has been bugging me for a while, um, so I 
took a slightly deeper dive. Um, how is wealth created? Let me let put this one out. Banks have monopoly on wealth creation. Um, how do you wrap your head around that? So banks, imagine that you're in a bank and the bank every morning there's a guy that sits there, there's an input box and a button that says create money. That's how the banks work more or less. And they input, okay, how much money are we going to create today? Let's make 100 million. Push the button and they make 100 million. So how are these 100 million then? Um, so they need us to use the 100 million to circulate them around us and we need to be optimistic. So the bank, banks need us to be optimistic about the future so that these 100 million are absorbed by us as a society. But if they go wild, we might starting to suspect something. So they need value. They need real value created some, somewhere by people, by entrepreneurs, in order to succeed in just printing and creating wealth. Um, which is also a very strange idea. And banks love creating wealth. I mean, you imagine you have a, the power of just putting, pushing a button and creating money. I mean, they love it. That's why they're regulated, because if, if you're not regulated, you just get incentivized to create value out of thin air for whatever stupid reasons you might want to do that for. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why there's the, all the regulations in place. Um, and banks get very creative when they create wealth, because uh, how do they do that? Well, interest rate is the first way of doing it, and it's, it has been going on for many, many years. When you get money from the bank, you are a borrower and you have to return more money. And when all the people, have, you know, when that's how they print money. But after that, they started creating derivatives, which is, uh, a, well, a fancy, it's, it's a financial instrument where they start to mix and, uh, and slice and dice all kinds of things that s they sell to you and then you decide, okay, that looks good, and I'm going to be optimistic and buy it and give you more money and all that. So debt, and debt in terms of not a personal debt, but like, you know, the world debt. The debt, the world is all the time in debt. And who are we in debt with to? You know, that's not Mars or Venus. We're in debt to the banks. And that's because the banks just, um, you know, they get uh, too excited creating money and not tying it to real value. So practically, debt is when the banks think that everything is going smooth and they take our optimism, our future optimism, our belief that everything is going fine and print the money now. So future value taken into the present. That's what they do with, with debt. Okay, finally, cryptocurrency. Um, so there are two uh, key elements in cryptocurrency. It's crypto and currency. <laughs> okay, obvious one. And they actually tie to the two things that I just talked about. So value and wealth. How, how's that? So for crypto, I'm just going to go through all of these because most of you are probably familiar with all the benefits of what crypto is bringing on the table. And that's what we at Paysafe are exploring and trying to see where crypto is going to add value to what we do. Um, you know, all these things, they can be applied. And I don't know why, you know, things like private blockchains, they, they get a bad vibe or bad hype because blockchain is a technology that can bring a lot of value uh, to private companies and, well, it's much easier for us to start from here. Why much easier? Because currency, um, well, currency is heavily regulated. I mean, uh, currency, as we saw, is how wealth is created. And how do you create wealth in the cryptocurrency world? For a long time, uh, Bitcoin, uh, well, Bitcoin is perfectly inelastic. So as you know never um, without taking into account how much the price goes up the supply is fixed so that's fine you there's a fixed amount of wealth created by each block that bitcoin produces 
Um, but then you get things like forks. I, I love the forks. So if um, you know Bitcoin Cash on the 31st of August, you have uh, $10,000 expressed in, uh, in Bitcoin. On the 1st of August, you get that plus the Bitcoin Cash stuff that you have. So out of thin air, a fork creates wealth that is not really bound into something. It's kind of hanging in there and hoping that people will like Bitcoin Cash and move and use Bitcoin Cash so that the value is actually becoming real. They can transact with it. Um, ICOs are another way of creating wealth quite quickly because you start mapping things that do not exist yet. So there's a, there's a project, but you map it now to something of, of substance, to your cryptocurrency that exists. And who is the guardian of this wealth creation? That's a question and that's uh, a question that I think soon there will be an answer because sooner or later there has to be some regulation in this area. Um, otherwise people, no, regular, regular people end up in uh, all kind of pyramids or Ponzi schemes that their money just goes into the air and well, right now the ecosystem, the, the cryptocurrency and the blockchain ecosystem go through a process that the, the real world already went through about a hundred years ago where they realized that you know if wealth is created by banks it could be created by, some, by somebody else as well and there needs to be regulation otherwise things get strange and crazy. Okay, I want to leave you with uh, two final thoughts. Are cryptocurrencies revolutionary enough? Why? Why? Uh, I want to understand this, this later and uh, my next sentence will give you a bit of a glimpse uh, of that because I just yesterday I read that uh, in the US there was the first licensed uh, derivatives company uh, trading with uh, cryptocurrencies. So practically exactly what we have in the financial world, all these uh, highly, Im Im you know, there's a lot of imagination of when you create financial instruments. So we take that and we just do it on top of blockchain and cryptocurrencies, which I don't know, it, I think this technology has more potential than that. And really the, finals, the final thing I want to say is this one. So this is from a, a talk of Yanis Varoufakis, a very interesting uh, economist. And I think this is where crypto can, can actually be much more interesting. You know, he's suggesting that if instead of capital being you know, used the way it is used now, every one of us should have his own capital. And when we join a company, when we become a part of an endeavor, we bring that capital into the company and we get part of the profit and then when we leave we take that capital with us out of that and he's suggesting that we can do that with cryptocurrency um well he says issued by the world bank you know this is quite controversial but i'm pretty sure that central banks will quite soon jump into cryptocurrencies and try to explore and see how they can work with that because banks and especially central banks they want to be part of the process of wealth creation because that's what they do thank you So um, another presentation that we want to show you today is basically, as I told you at the beginning, questions. ah, questions. Okay, questions. Good. So shoot the question then, huh? About which part exactly? About the whole thingy. <laughs> <laughs> about the whole thingy. If we talk about wealth. We're going to be to get shot down the moment we try to create wealth because that's a regulated industry. About cryptocurrency, what we're doing, right now we are on the path of exploring how we can use blockchain for simplifying the collaboration between the different parties that are part of the payment processing industry. Um, I don't know how many of you know about how payment processing works, but there are many, many parties involved in um, you know getting a merchant to start processing payments um, you know processing a transaction so all that can be simplified by cryptocurrency by, sorry by blockchain and that's what we're exploring so right now you're making money on charging more than visa asks you to pay for accepting deposits into your digital wallet right uh, yes and no Surcharge on this, yeah, and then you pass that 
money on to your merchants. How would you cannibalize your business to move forward with something that is better? Cannibalizing would we move if we if you talk about cryptocurrency. How much it will cost you to transfer Bitcoin to your friend right now? Uh, too much money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Who is, who is regulating something decentralized? Yeah, sure. Um, whether I'm a fan or not is, in this case, irrelevant because that's that's how a payment, you know, that's how value, well, not value, wealth is currently working because of the banks. So you can't stop the banks of getting and trying to take a stake in cryptocurrency and trying to regulate it. That doesn't mean I'm a fan, but um, it, that's what's most probably going to happen. Uh, hi, I'm working in the same company actually with uh, digital wallets and remittance, so I would just want to add something. So first of all, in terms of who is regulating what, the issue with uh, PaySafe experimenting with blockchain is that you as an institution, you're heavily regulated. So you're not able to just say, okay, I'm going to just do money remittance with blockchain. So you have to really dig into compliance, risk, and so on. That's one thing. Another thing is like, uh, we think that you can actually easy transfer money with blockchain, but in the end, we always rely on banks. So if I want to send money to my grandmother somewhere, she whatever, <laughs> but it's uh, in the end, you use a blockchain network, for example, Ripple, and then in the end, they have to collaborate with the bank to transfer the money to my grandmother's bank account. So currently, we're still depending on the bank system. But there are ways to reduce costs within this uh, um, transaction thing happening in between. So I guess this answers the question. We, it's, a, it's a very specific question. Maybe you can uh, reply in person uh, directly. Um, I just want to say uh, that, yes, of course, a round of applause for PaySafe. <laughs> I, I think when, when they are talking about blockchain, they're most probably talking about um, a uh, a centralized blockchain that they're going to use or, or their own solution. So they're not talking uh, most probably about using bit the Bitcoin network or the Ethereum network to run their services, but they are creating their own solution, perhaps. I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, when, when it comes to payments, clearing and settlement, and uh, when you're entering the world of finance uh, and regulation, of course, it's very hard currently to use a public blockchain solution. So uh, if they are going to implement something, most probably it's going to be their own system. Um, I'm going to give the, the word to Ivo for the next presenter. Yeah, um, before uh, adding to the next presenter, actually these are all very good questions. And cheers for the question. These are very important things to think about. I'm doing stuff around payments and when you're trying to innovate in payments and you know Visa is very inefficient and all the layers on top of Visa is super inefficient because they add costs and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, they have the network. The general public is used to them. That's the whole fucking point. And before you bring them something new, give them something that they, it needs to be like super good user experience. Before that, definitely, definitely. I want to get rid of chargeback as well. But the thing is, it will take some time. And this is important. This 
Yeah. If you want, you can share your points some, uh, some other. These are all great discussions. And we want to kind of have more and more of these because these are the problems that these sort of blockchains will solve. Like nowadays, everybody wants to decentralize everything. Airbnb needs to be decentralized. Uber needs to be decentralized. Let's decentralize the world. But like some things are efficient. And to be more efficient with blockchains, it will take time. And the little details of why decentralized things make the system efficient we will actually need to be improved with the blockchain. And this will take time. But more of these conversations will be welcome. We'll create more meetups around that and so on. Guys, shut up. <laughs> yeah, so one more presentation, just to tell you of another player of the community, a new startup that's arising there, doing something very interesting on the blockchain. Then we'll do a break. You can mingle. And afterwards, we'll do a game. Because with blockchain and with the whole crypto world now, there's so much information nowadays. There is a lot. You don't know where to start from. And if you missed it, if you missed the thing, if you're starting now, I don't know where to start. It's like so much stuff. And there are a lot of terms, a lot of things like that. And in this audience, probably many people are advanced in their understanding. Some people are complete beginners. So we need to appreciate all that. And we'll do a game to, to show you how basically new educational initiatives and new educational models can help you understand more and there is a ni nice startup coming out of that called Cryptivity around crypto creativity basically what we can do with that knowledge what are the use cases we can do not to just recycle whatever everybody says on twitter or whatever like what really we can actually build that's the point so the next startup that i want to present is um comrade these guys are doing um, collaborative, uh, basically collectives on, on top of blockchain. Where is Todor? Todor? Oh, here he is. I'll load his presentation and he'll tell you more about what they do. Round of applause. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Todor. And uh, before we start, I'll just uh, make a bit of clarification. So basically, we are a blockchain project and we are not an ICO. Uh, we are something different that basically serves the same purpose, but it's legal. And what we are, we are a blockchain cooperative. And cooperatives are interesting form that's almost forbidden, um, uh, for, for forgotten, but, but it's a very interesting form. So, uh, a bit about me. Uh, I started programming back in 1996. So currently I'm about 21 years uh, experience as developer. And usually I say I'm developer by heart. Um, so that's it. At uh, I, about nine years ago, in uh, 2008, I started this company Obecto, and my idea was to build a company where people will be somehow more important than the business. So it's basically a people-centric, human-centric company, and we went through a lot of stages. And after all these things that happened, I'll need a presentation. Uh, which one is yours, though? Ah, just a second. Okay, I'm back. So that's Comrade. And so basically after being a developer for so many years and after running this software studio for nine years, uh, I have a lot of developers around me and I'm seeing what's happening in the developer community. And basically what's happening and I'm seeing it more and more is that developers are quitting their jobs. So developers are saying, okay, we don't wanna be employees anymore. We see that we are somehow more valuable than just being uh, employees. And why developers are doing that? Uh, because they're looking for a better work-life balance, because in the most cases they get a better pay, because if you're working in an outsourcing company, of course the outsourcing company cuts from your pay. And in the end of the day, uh, just to build something that's your own, that's another reason. So it's very common that a team lead gets two or three developers from the company they leave and they start outsourcing until they find this great idea. And I'm seeing it all around with my friends. So. Basically, we started seeing this process a few years ago, and for the last three years, I'm trying to explore how our human-centric company can actually become blockchain company, how it can become even more democratic, and how we can share ownership and stuff. So after several experiments, uh, in the beginning of 2016, we actually restructured our company, and we became this uh, Innovation Builders Cooperative. And basically what we offer, we offer developers the freedom to, want to work on what they want, 
how, uh, uh, from where they want and how much they want. So basically we have completely freedom here. Uh, we have shared infrastructure, so it's not just you and your three developers, we are basically sharing our infrastructure, which is sales and marketing. Of course, we are in the domain of outsourcing right now. But yeah, we share this infrastructure, so f developers have freedom, but they are also part of something. And in the end, we are also sharing the profit that we generate. So we have this shared ownership. And basically, af after this experiment, uh, I can say that it was a huge success. And we are probably one of the very few companies uh, that are in the domain of uh, software development that can say that we have the, a queue of people waiting to join. Because it's uh, usually the other thing around. P companies are always looking for developers, but we have a lot of people waiting to join. And we also went a bit further, and the last year, me and Zvezdin, uh, Zvezdin will be uh, teaching the, the course in, uh, the, the, the Solidity course in Softuni. Uh, Zvezdin is uh, actually, um, um, yeah, basically my mentee, and together with him, uh, last year we developed this thing, which is Obitcoin, Crypto Shares for Digital Cooperatives. We have a published paper that's on our uh, on our GitHub, and he uh, won some uh, competitions with our uh, with with this thing. But the, what we've reached so far with Ubecto and our Bitcoin uh, was very limited. It was kind of an experiment because Ubecto is basically in the domain of outsourcing. Uh, we are actually a company. We are not a corporation legally, and a uh, few other uh, things like also our Bitcoin system is very limited to just profit sharing, not overall governance. So what we are doing right now is we are doing this Comrade Cooperative. That will be a cooperative from developers, designers, and entrepreneurs that are building together companies. That's the idea. And Obecto will be one of these companies, but we are planning also to do a lot, a lot more in the future. So quickly, what's Comrade? Comrade basically has three incarnations, let's say. So first, it's a framework. So it's an open source reusable framework. Everyone can download it. and. Uh, Basically, all, all the logic is, is, is in the framework. And of course, you can tweak it for your specific scenario. And it's uh, applicable in many different scenarios. So it's applicable for cooperatives, but it's also applicable for managing budgets within company. It's applicable even for municipalities for managing uh, certain budgets. Um, and the next thing, we are a community. Basically, uh, in the last presentation, we saw that money are created in the banks. Uh, in our world, money are created in the pe w w uh, within the people. So basically, uh, every member gets certain token allowance every month, and then he can distribute this token allowance uh, based on certain criteria. So basically, people can crowdfund their projects uh, with our own token, and they can also give these peer-to-peer tips when someone helps you with doing your, your thing and your project. And after uh, the, the last thing is we are a governance, meaning that it, uh, we are basically a DAO. We, we, we will try to make finally a working DAO because this still doesn't happen. And actually making a DAO was the very reason for creating Ethereum at first place. That was the Vitalik's plan uh, with, uh, with this. Uh, the, the first thing was to create a DAO. Uh, so we, we will try to make a successful DAO, and uh, it, will, it is going to be a human-centric DAO. So basically a DAO that's not about some abstract uh, intelligent agents, but people and their social interactions. So with all these uh, token dynamics, uh, we reflect actually the actual social interactions in, in a team. And uh, finally, we will be a legal form, which is a bit exotic. It's uh, uh, European Cooperative Society. It's a strange form. That's basically European-wide cooperative that may have uh, uh, settled in certain countries, but basically it's a European-wide uh, legal entity. And the people that join our cooperative, both as developers and as investors, they receive the legal statute of uh, cooperators. And that's why we are not an ICO, but we are a legal thing, and we basically follow the rules and we comply. And what's the plan? So we have Obecto, we have Comrade, and we have two first projects that we are working on right now. These are Stamat and Hatchery. Stamat is a software team Automat, and it's basically a marketplace. This is going to be our marketplace uh, for software developers, because uh, currently there is a huge um, um, 
uh, a lot of uh, such marketplaces appear exactly because these developers they are leaving the, the companies and they won't uh, start wor uh, working uh, by themselves. Uh, but all these marketplaces have the chicken and egg problem. And with our cooperative, we are at least solving one of the problems. So we have the developers and now we just need to uh, basically uh, sell ourselves. But that's for, for the part of uh, just gen generating some income for, for the developers. Another thing that we are doing is hatchery, and it's uh, another interesting thing. We call it crypto assets trading bot as a service. So basically, we have this artificial evolution uh, platform, basically genetic platform, that creates different uh, trading strategies. Uh, the bad ones, we kill them. Uh, the relatively good ones, we breed them to create new individuals. And the best ones, we give them actual money to trade. And uh, these uh, uh, individuals, they combine different genes. Some of the genes are just pure uh, technical analysis um, um, uh, signals, but we also have um, this crowdsource model where everyone can write a more sophisticated strategy and test it with uh, with the population. And uh, basically, the idea is that the developers in our cooperative will be able to create uh, more such strategies. Uh, and we are also working with Vizdin uh, with for an, for one uh, such uh, advanced strategy that's using the blockchain data, basically all the transactions that are happening in the last block, to try to determine the the the, the price uh, for for the next minute. And yeah, it's a linearly scalable uh, microservice architecture, so it's very scalable. And uh, the thing is that we are not a hedge fund. Uh, we are actually just offering this as a service. So if you have some wallet and you have some cryptocurrency in this wallet, you can start your own hatchery with your own population of bots that are evolving and trading better and better. And that's our timeline. So yeah, 2008, we started to back to. 2016, we become this experimental cooperative. And now we are on the way in November this year to uh, actually establish Comrade as this European uh, uh, cooperative society. And then uh, somewhere in the spring 2018, we'll make uh, bigger crowdfunding, which will be somehow equivalent to an ICO. But once again, we are not an ICO. And if you want to get in touch with me, here are the, the things. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions to Todder? Yeah. There is one. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, um, I've just got a few questions. Maybe we'll speak later. One of the main ones is: uh, Do you see any capacity issues with the trading bots in terms of uh, money? Okay, uh, so with the trading bots, we are not trading our own money. Uh, we are uh, so, for example, let's say we are right now talking with some uh, investors in that direction. But basically, uh, if you're a hedge fund and you want to trade cryptocurrency, you can basically uh, hire our platform, and then we take certain split from the profit. Uh, that does the thing. Uh, uh, you, you mean in terms of algorithm? If our algorithm will start trading with itself or somehow? Okay, uh, you're right. Uh, if we are trading, let's say, 10 billion, we'll definitely have this problem. Um, but uh, we, are n we will be not starting with this. And also, it's very important that each different hatchery, so each different instance of a hatchery, actually has different population and different set of bots. So all of them will have similar performance, but after all, they will be different strategies. So even if we are trading only hatchery with a hatchery, we we'll still have a market. Can you speak with each other later on? Do you have any more questions or we'll start for the next one? Because I think that everybody's super tired already. We presented a lot of information, but uh, now we have a party, you can mingle, then we have a couple of games, so you relax a little bit. Uh, but before that, I just want to have another more presentation, which is around something which is super important in this crazy world we're living in, like Todor presented something which is hard to wrap around your head yet um, and that's the legal part how we do that on the legal front how we establish proper legal infrastructure based to the regulation on the local legal environment and so on and so forth for that actually we'll have a separate event we'll have a separate event only for the legal aspects of the blockchain because they are quite important but uh, today we invited jenny from uh, one legal net who are actually working around these challenges around what 
needs to be happening and changing in the legal framework so these kind of projects are properly, I don't know, properly made to be legal. <laughs> so Jenny can say a couple of words. Станах много висока. Здравейте. Много ми е приятно да видя такава голяма и организирана общност. Браво на Владо. Следя неговото развитие в тази сфера от самото начало. С голямо постоянство и търпение очевидно е постигнал построяването на такава силна интересна общност. Legal aspects of cryptocurrency. Ще разочаровам англоговорящите гости. Ще, ще говоря на български, защото съм много изморена. И защото искам да кажа неща, които... Много неща, но ще се огранича с legal, legal аспектите. Преди това, позволете ми да споделя моето лично виждане като човек, който е пристъпил между прага на две столетия и на един цял милениум. Наблюдавах много интересни явления, как се раждаха нови светове, изникнаха буквално пред очите ми, изчезнаха цели професии. За мен биткоин е социално явление. Може да се третира като парично, финансово, от всеки един аспект, като някакво средство за профит, като някакво средство за избягване на регулации, за решаване на някакви реални проблеми. Но биткоин се появи в момент, в точния тайминг, когато хората бяха тотално разочаровани от банки, от правителства, от истаблишмента, от всичко онова, което трудно вече може да преглътне в новата генерация. Той не е технология, която е като цвет е екзотично израснал за една нощ. В биткоин технологията има много други преди това технологии заложени. Никой няма да успее да спре нещо, което е дошло времето му. Нито правителства, нито банки, нито централни, нито локални. Аз лично споделям оптимистичната тенденция за това, че биткоин Виртуалните пари ще оцелеят на целия натиск, на целия вятър срещу тях. Те объркаха много сметки. В България, добрата новина е, че България е идеално място за бизнес с биткоини. Защо? Официално, легално, биткоина не е признат като законно платежно средство. Но той не е забранен в България. Напротив, добрата новина е, че има фирми, които вече преодоляха трудностите на търговския регистр и успяха да регистрират в своя предмет на дейност търговия и други дейности, екшчен, свързани с биткоин. Големия проблем Проклятието и благословията на, бик, на, на, на биткоини, на виртуалните валути, е това, че те са от една страна децентрализирани. Това е тяхната благословия. Проклятието е, че от друга страна, за да стабилизират своята позиция, знаем колко волатилна валута е това, за да стабилизират своите позиции, е необходим някакъв акт, държавен, или друг, по който те да бъдат признати като законно платежно средство. Българското правителство изчаква, е в позиция на изчакване позицията на Европейската, на Европейския, на Европейската комисия. Европейската централна банка направи предложение за приемане, за промени в директивата, свързана с мерките против изпиране на пари. Знаете, че това е основният аргумент в битката срещу биткоин и виртуалните валути. Тъй като в европейските институции, освен уморени от екчени чиновници, работят изключително смислени хора, които се занимават дори с правата на роботите вече, са преценили, че е дошло времето да се дадат регулации, да се дадат легални дефиниции на, на виртуалните пари, 
на виртуалния екшендж, на много други термини и много други операции, които са свързани с биткоин и с виртуални пари. Така че нашето правителство ще се съобрази с европейската директива, с европейските препоръки. Становището на Европейската Централна банка е тези операции трябва да се лицензират. Определени операции, свързани с биткоин, особено търговия с финансови инструменти. Това е бъдещето. И Европа се готви да въведе лицензионен режим за сделки, с виртуални пари, особено сделки, свързани с финансови инструменти, с търгуване на регулирани пазари. Така че, смело инвестирайте, създавайте дружество в България. България не забранява, не пречи, напротив, тя позволява и в известен смисъл дори като се имат предвид инструкциите и разъснеята на Националната приходна агенция, тя дори облага сделки, свързани с биткоин операции. И да, ще правим един друг съпрат въркшоп с Жени, правите? Жени? Да. Така, всеки, който има легални чаленджи и ищи за сетинга на операция, за сетинга на криптокурнси, or whatever crazy thing you come up with, we'll come by and we'll try to find ways to kind of formalize that and, I don't know, make sense of it, as difficult as it is. Um, now you can mingle, now you can party, you can drink. Two more things I just want to mention. There are two interesting events coming up. The, on the 3rd of October, we'll have Mike Arrington, who is the founder of TechCrunch here in Sofia, And his, op his fund, Crunch Fund, is now investing actively in crypto projects. Could be ICOs in, a, in that format, or actually companies that are playing in that field. So that's super interesting, and with that we'll have Propi, which is one of the successful ICOs coming from Bulgaria. They recently raised around 18 million, I think. And uh, they'll tell you about their story, how they did the ICO, and so on and so forth. That's on the third. Now it's going to be on the website cryptocrowd.org or on the Facebook group. And another event that's coming up, very interesting, actually, uh, that's uh, by an organization called EDIT. EDIT is, uh, stands from Economic Development via Innovation and Technology. And these guys invited for first time in Bulgaria Googlers. Actually, Google didn't look at Bulgaria much. And now they are doing an event around what kind of things can be created in Bulgaria. Um, where is Angel, actually? I wanted him to say some words. Oh, here he is. Uh, so basically, they are doing an event on the 23rd of November, right? And you tell a little bit, and that's it, and then you can drink, we'll have a couple of games, and yeah, that's it. Да, Иво, двете момчета, Руси и Синалки, които дигнаха ръка, че не говорят български, си излязох. Само да кажа. А, <laughs> здрасти, а, аз съм Ангел от Edit, което е абревиатура за Economic Development via Innovation and Technology. И... А, Всъщност, когато се представяхме преди половин година, казахме, че обираме от, и за, от името на и за а, българската стартъп екосистема и за стартъпите. От тогава се случиха някои неща, които вече ни позволяват да го кажем. Това като, например, а, едни консумолци, които направиха една организация, с която вече а, ни взеха тази функция. За сметка на това ни останаха две неща, които правим. Едното е да правим супер яки събития из цяла България, да каним топ левел хора от цял свят, които да говорят и въпреки това се прибираме на четири крака след тези събития. И второто нещо е да правим проучвания. Проучвания на базата на които можем да изискваме повече за това да се развива правилно екосистемата на дигитално предприемачество. Тук съм за да ви призова тези, които от вас имат малки и средни предприятия дигитални, да се включат в нашата анкета, защото ние сме единствената държава в източна Европа и в Централна, която много малко компании са попълнили подобно проучване. 
първото такова проучване беше миналата година, Innovation Ship Digital, организирано от нас. Тази година е второто, целим повече компании, целим по-витални данни за цялото това нещо. Защото на 23 ноември правим едно голямо събитие, което ще е рапъп на тази уикока, която Иво каза. На него ще има Еврокомисар по дигиталните въпроси едно и General Manager на Google за Европа, Близки и Истоки и Африка. И Азия. Не знам какво е това. И така, чаровните... Емея. Емея. Чаровните ми асистентки там ще ви покажат и ще ви разкажат малко повече за проучването. Доколкото видях от Светлин Наков, като ви попита колко от вас кодат и колко от вас са девелопери, не дигнаха много хора ръце, така че предполагам сте предприемачи, имате компании. И ще се радвам да попълните нашето серви. Мерси. And that's it. Окей. Вече на български ли си говорим? Не знам. Аз съм малко изморен. Сега, тук има вино, което го спонсорира Eternity, LaunchHub и няколко етера от вече нашия покет, нашия wallet. Така че изпийте го. Има бирички, има водички, има готини хора. Запознайте се, стига сме с това българското. Не мога да си говоря с другите. Такова смисъл. Дайте ви име кой какво прави, какво става. Да се позабавляваме малко. А между другото в криптогрупата вече има една статия. Игричката, която ще направим, ако прочетете тази статия, тя е на Баладжи с Рини Васан Тоц он Токенс. Ще видим да ги правим една игра и ще видим дали всъщност хората разбират какво значат думите в нея и така нататък. Но това след малко, сега поне половин час, пийте и се веселете и това вече.